Hello and welcome to Playing Favorites. I'm Paul. I'm Justin. I'm ready. Justin, you're doing your <laughs> your your mental exercises. Yeah, on YouTube. I can't. I, I don't have yeah. the camera to show off my like my 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 legs are actually split right now. You can't see. Yeah, both, you can't, both of us right yeah, now. Nobody yeah. can see, but we're doing full splits <laughs> because today. Finally, of all Happens. like of all the things I've asked you to watch, you finally humored me, and we watched 1988's Bloodsport, starring Jean Claude Van Damme, and weirdly enough, Forrest Whitaker. That was one of those moments I I really enjoyed when you were like, "Is that?" And I'm like, "Yep," and you're like, "Saw Guerrero." <laughs> well, also the other guy too, like, is from Nerds. Like that's even funnier. That's funny too. Like I, that's, that's... oh, uh, Donald Gibb. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's from he's the, yeah he's the he's the I, what was his name in Revenge of the Nerds he's like monster uh, oh ogre animal what ogre ogre yes ogre he eventually becomes a, he eventually becomes a nerd too like he yes. down the road yes this is this is a good movie for him this is mostly his movie oh yeah uh, yeah I, I think I think so he actually talks more than. I mean, he actually acts the best, I think, out of everyone in this film. Anyways, we'll get into that, I think. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but if you don't know who we are, we're playing favorites. This is our podcast. If you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and click that subscribe button, like this video. Uh, if you're listening to us on a podcast, get ready. You have been privy to this new season where we have been really spending a lot of time reviewing some of these things that like one of us has, has not seen or we haven't seen in a long time, kind of revisiting some really uh, funny, I don't want to say classics, but just some some fun stuff that say really cult, left cult, a mark cult on classic. us. Cult classic. Yeah, sure. Somebody likes yeah, it, right? Somebody yeah. likes it. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, we've been yeah. doing, we've been doing uh, uh, these, uh, these reviews a little differently than we have in the past where we actually watch the film together, which I think has really kind of made oh. these conversations even better. Plus, yes, less, it has. less less of a struggle to watch the film, I think, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's like we, we, we have like it's it's about like scheduling, making sure we can watch it together. But then when we watch it, we actually finish it because during the many boring parts, like in Bloodsport, we can just talk and yeah. <laughs> make fun of the movie as we go. Yeah. Uh, no, it's been very fun. Um, and, and this is, this is a movie very near and dear to my heart. I mean, I've seen it like, probably the first time when I was like six or seven years old. Uh, this was one that my brother had taped off of HBO, like the free weekend when they used to just, you know, let people have access to HBO and he would fill up a VHS cassette with like four movies on super long play or super extended play. And Bloodsport was the first one. Um, on this same video, I will also mention was Predator 2, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and Lock Up, starring Sylvester Stallone. That doesn't seem like that. Like one is not the like the other in that in that in that in that combination. It, it, this is really why I saw Bloodsport and like actually stopped and watched it because I was trying to get to Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but I had to fast forward through all of Bloodsport. And then I started just playing it because I was like, what is this movie? Oh, that's really Kick funny. I, I, my, my first, my first thing with experience of Bloodsport what was like my knowledge of the child was like, I think I was at my aunt's house, in Pennsylvania, and they were going to watch it. And we were all mm -hmm. told, the kids were all told they had to leave the room because there was a very yeah. graphic, bloody scene in it. And I'm just like, and like they described it. And I remember watching it. Finally, we watched you. I didn't bring it up when we were seeing it. But like, hmm. it's literally where the bone just comes out. I guess that's it. Like that was all the only thing. Oh, like that's when the they only. Break, when they yeah, like they, that. That was the only thing I think that was like really. I mean, yeah, it's violent, but like that's really the only graphic, I guess, part of it. But yeah, would they they made us all leave the room because of this graphic, horrible movie? <laughs> really? Wow. I don't. I like, and that's such like a small like a, a very quick cut too. They don't linger on it. You know, they don't. Yeah. This movie for all of its fighting and, you know, it's called blood sport. There isn't a whole lot of blood. There isn't a whole lot of like glorification, like, 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 you know, I imagine like an Eli Roth movie or, or, 
you know, like Kill Bill or something where like blood is spraying, oh, you like, know, yeah, like covering the camera. Nothing like that in this movie. Like it's it's a lot of like it's like watching wrestling almost. Like mm-hmm. it's very well choreographed fights. I think it gets that's, blo- that's it gets really bloodier well- in like watching a hockey match than this movie. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> like I mean, ah, uh, 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 yeah, especially Rangers fans seeing that <laughs> good old fashioned hockey fight not terribly long ago. That's been a few that was more. Great. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, uh, any, uh, anyways, yeah, like it's not, I, it, it's actually kind of like, uh, it's almost like just a little bit more mature of a Mortal Kombat. Like Mortal Kombat has like some, like even that's a kid's movie, you know, really mm-hmm. this one isn't that bad at all. You're right. It's, it's not, it's, but anyways, uh, I, so where, where we, do you want to start with this film? I don't know how you want to talk I wanna, about I wanna, it. I want to set up some things here for anybody who's not seen this movie. Because there is a little, like, controversy around it. Because it is, quote-unquote, based on a true story. That's Yet right. nobody can corroborate this true story. It's, it's about a, um, I think he was an army captain. His name is Frank Dukes. Like, Dukes. put up your Dukes. Dukes. Uh, but it's spelled D-U-X, so it looks like ducks. But um, anyway, so it's about Frank Dukes' life. How he, in Thailand, got... Um, he found out about like an underground like tournament, fighting tournament. Was, in it, Th- was it Thailand? I thought it was Hong Kong. Here they were in Hong Kong. Sorry, yeah. Hong Kong. Yeah, I only remember. I only remember because of my comments about Shenmue. That's really, really oh, recent. Yes. How, how <laughs> much it really looked like Shenmue. It's like around the same time of the game, yeah. right? What yep. did you say? Yeah, I think like, like eighty six was the when 80s, the game early was. 90s. Yeah. So, um. Mr. Frank Dukes, according to the story, goes to this, finds this um, secret uh, full contact, which is like somebody could be injured, somebody could even die in this tournament. Um, but it's not typical, but it but it is full contact. There is no like holding back. Um, it is like there are two ways to win. You either ring out your opponent or you make them submit. That's the only two ways to win or like they pass out or die. Those are other ways, I suppose. But um, it's called the Kumite. And as you'll know, many times through the movie, the music is, is pumping and someone is chanting, Kumite, Kumite. So in, the, um, in this Kumite tournament, um, apparently Frank Dukes wins this underground tournament that nobody can corroborate even exists. Uh, there is like reports that, you know, he might have fabricated it, but apparently he, he went to his grave really... Um, actually, I don't know if he's dead no, he's or still alive. alive. We looked him up. Remember, we saw a picture of him. Oh, that's like, right. <laughs> he doesn't really look anything like Jean Claude Van Damme. No, not well, at it all. Like it. He's not a he's not a Belgian guy. But um, yeah, so it's it's his story of why he's interested in the Kumite. We get that background, and then really the meat of the of the movie is preparing for the fights, watching the fights, and then the final confrontation between him and Chong Li, who played by Bolo Young, who's like a doc, like villain in these kinds of kickboxing movies. Mm -hmm. He's great. You know, he does that really well. He has like five lines of dialogue, maybe, or five words of dialogue, (laughs) excuse me. And Um, and great expressions. He He has some great, great facial expressions. I'm telling you. (laughs) Tell you, this is the best. This is this movie is like filled with wonderful uh, facial expressions. I have to say, yes, yes. Um, I think because nobody could speak the same language of the people working on the film. No one, there was no shared language, so it was all pantomime. <laughs> so how how we, usually we like to go through our favorite moments. I mean, I mean, there's not much plot. You just kind of gave it away. It's like, yeah, you know, John, uh, Frank Dukes. You got to say it right, Dukes. Uh, John Klein. <laughs> Like I, the one thing I wanted to say the way this movie starts, it's like the most randomest thing. Like it's terrible. like it's just terrible way to start. Well, they were cleaning the Kumite tournament, right? There's, there's a janitor and stuff. They're just kind of prepping for it. That's not bad. But it's a good it's, start. Credits it's are just rolling. Jean Claude like disappearing in a shower. Like that. I don't. I don't understand. Oh. So so yeah, the army like catches wind. It, 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 I feel like he's going AWOL. To go fight in this tournament like he's still yeah but i've never seen such like attention to like we need to get this guy back like he's some amazing i don't know like, like he's, a, he's like he's an s he's an asset to the government i yeah. guess like he's so 
amazingly. Like we can't we can't let him know? go kickbox because he might get he might get too hurt to help with our missions. Uh, but you know he has to. John Claude doesn't care. He wants to fight in the Kumite because because of a wonderful backstory. But anyways, go ahead. What is your questions for this movie we, so we can well, dive no, in? We, we, we get that, yeah, there's there's like a half an hour flashback right at the beginning yes. of the movie. It's yeah. like, why didn't we just start here? Um, of your, of of the, um, of the, <laughs> my first question is not a real question, but it's like, do you, do you like the, the boy who played young uh, Jean-Claude, young Frank Dukes? Uh, <laughs> Do I like him? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, mean Great actor. Great I, actor. I like him for the fact that it makes the scene hilarious. I mean, I guess like, like that's about it. Is he a good representation of a young Jean-Claude Van Damme? Sure, because he's a bad actor. So yeah, great. Well, <laughs> tell me we're going to make a deal, Justin. We're going to make a deal? What kind of a deal? <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to. Like, I just think that the, like oh. the young version of him is nothing like who he is as an adult. Like, it doesn't like even like the costuming of young Jean Claude Van Damme. Like <laughs> him and his what what is a Giants jersey? What was it? Yes, giant giant. Like I think it was San Francisco Giants hat, New York Giants sweatshirt. Was that, is, that is, like is that what giant. it was? Yes, I think he was just a fan of big. <laughs> Do you think the Giant. director didn't know that there were different teams and different sides of the country? I don't know for certain, but that's that's my head cannon right there. I want to see uh, what picture. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's get down a uh, brass tacks here. So we we are introduced to a lot of characters, a, a lot of unfortunately Asian stereotypes too, like littered throughout. Um, I mean, there's a there's a whole thing about like eating the food there and how weird it is and Forrest Whitaker trying to use chopsticks like he's tossing a salad. Um, but anyways, barring that, there are a lot of fun side characters. And that's my first question. His main character, I mean, JCVD, what is there really to say? Main antagonist, Bolo Young, he's, he's good, but there's not much to say. He's just mean. Like, you know, like he mm -hmm. just wants to win the Kumite and he'll do yeah. anything to win. Who is your favorite side character in this? There are a um, lot. I, uh, it's, okay, a, it's okay. a toss up. Non it's a toss up. It's... Non fighters. Oh, non fighter. Well, that's easy. That's the, ha it's the, ha it's the handler then. Oh, they're hand. Oh, oh yeah. My, like, <laughs> I don't know his why. name. Like, he, <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> I'll find his name. You go on. Why do you? Why do you like? Because like his role is has no meaning and no purpose. Like I don't understand it. But yet, yes. I enjoy his presence. Like it's like he has like no, he kind of creates like actual like sort of sort of a dialogue amongst the characters. Otherwise, I don't think they would have talked at all. You know what I mean? Like his role like gives him something to kind of yes. bounce off of. Where I just don't think any because he's like sort of the um, what do you want to call it? the uh, the person that tells all the information. What's that? What's that? What's that phrase? I'm trying to think of. He, yeah, he's Mister Exposition. Exposition. He's also like, Exposition. Like, comedic relief a little bit too yeah. but like for some reason like is always like never where he's supposed to be and like is all is always complaining about people being late so it's like <laughs> it makes you wonder what is what his job actually is yeah. right if he's supposed to handle the americans right donald gibb there as ray jackson and jcvd like if he's supposed to be handling them and like guiding them from like hotel to the fight and back and forth he just shows up at the fight and is like, where are you? Where is everybody? Like, yeah, he doesn't do a good job as a handler. But yeah, it doesn't seem funny. yeah because to me, it doesn't seem like the, 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 the tournament is very that well hidden. Like, it seems like it's very like well, like kind of promotely like it's like very like casually discussed by amongst people. Yep. But but yep. for some reason, it's a secret. It's a secret well, tournament. Like, like, I, they're, they're, like there's a reporter lady. Who's like the love interest too of JCV because of course you have to have that. Um, do you know what her name is? If I told you her name and the actress's name, I don't think you would be able to tell me which one was which. So we'll just say the journalist lady, uh, played by Leah Ayers. Um, is it, but is it, is it Elizabeth? 
Janice Kent. Janice? I don't think I've ever heard him saying that. <laughs> Do they say her name? I don't remember. I maybe that. once she just says, like, I'm a reporter, and that's the only information my name you is get. Jan- my name is Janice. <laughs> I like her because she is, like, the worst reporter ever. She's going to, like, restaurants and bars and, like, Do you know about this? Do you know about this secret tournament? Do you know about this secret tournament? But to the credit, people are like, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Is, They're like so cagey. <laughs> like, the whole, like, the whole, right. the it's whole the worst it, kept yeah, secret in yeah, Hong Kong. It, it, it's so weird. Like she had a bar and like constantly asking about Akumite, and they're like saying we don't have anything about it. But they're like, I'm not going to tell you about it. Nope. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, I really thought you were going to say one of the agents. I I really like Forrest Whitaker and. No, and uh, I I don't I don't know I don't care about them because it's like I don't even understand the handler at least has more of a purpose than the agents. Like I still don't understand what the agents are doing in this movie. Like I get okay, their, so their I understand now now looking up what their job title is. They're agents, yes, but they're um, United States Army Criminal Investigation Division. So. I think they're, they're they're obviously worried about Frank Dukes. Like, they're chasing after him to, like, apprehend him because they don't want him to fight in the tournament and get hurt or die, I guess. I understand, but it's also, like, they're trying to expose the Kumite? I, I, I don't know what their motivation is, really, either. Other how than do they find out about the secret tournament? And how do they know that Frank Dukes is going there? Like, you I, that's, know, that's... It's like, how, yeah, how do they find out? Because if Frank Dukes just didn't tell anybody and just, like, left, everyone would be like, well, where did he go? Like, but if he would have been a blabbermouth, too. Like, I'm going to Hong Kong for fights just, in this tournament. I know, he's just in the gym. Hey, guys, I'm going to this big fight. It's going to be this secret tournament. It's going to be great. Huge secret. Nobody knows about it. <laughs> and remember, my name but is Frank like Dukes. Her, like, tell everyone, Frank Dukes is going to the tournament. <laughs> I like that in the um, the <laughs> agents are chasing him, but it turns into like a Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin oh movie when they're chasing him like through Hong Kong. Like that's my favorite part. I think of the movie. Yeah, the now. biggest like, thing I said. I think when we're watching it, when we're watching it, like they just didn't. They never were able to put a chase scene in the movie. So, because yep. like, it's an action movie, you need to have a chase scene. But there was no in the plot. There was no reason to have a chase scene because you're <laughs> you're out of Kumite. So we're gonna just. <laughs> Have the two my cops favorite, chase him around in the most long. My favorite part when we're watching that, I... you you're like so happy that he was polite when he like jumped yeah. into somebody's boat to go. He's like, "Excuse me, yeah. sorry." And yeah. Like, we're like he's so polite yeah. running through Hong Kong. He was so he was so happy. It's like the happiest he was ever. The rest of the movie, he's like so sad or like determined or rough or just like. But when he's like just, I don't know what. Honestly, lollygagging through the the streets of Hong Kong, <laughs> like, and he's like playing with him. Literally. It's like he was like he like salivating through. Like he would run around a circle, like around a pole. Like, like it didn't make any sense. But then he would like wait for them. He'd be like, "Hey guys, where are you?" And like they'd come and chase after him. And he's like, bah, 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 "You'll never catch me." I feel like he could have lost them way earlier instead of like getting him on a boat. Like I don't understand. That was like I mean, what five. That was longer than some of the fights. Like I mean, like seriously, <laughs> it's a really long foot foot race chase scene through Hong Kong, which anybody with any kind of sense, if you were being chased, would just you know <laughs> disappear down an alley. Excuse me. Seven blessings upon you. <laughs> um, we okay, but yeah, I think the just the the both of those agents that that whole thing really for the chase sequences they're they're my favorite they're like clearly like they've never been out of the country even though they're these army investigator detectives whatever um but yeah okay thank you thank you i appreciate your answer but now tell me this justin sure who is your favorite fighter we can keep jcvd even roy jackson ray jackson out of this if you want but like of the people who aren't even named, um, which was like your, which fighters did you like? I, I, like I, I wish remember. they would have spent more time on this one, but it was like, I mean, I'm just going to, because I don't know the name of these people. So I have to, it's the black guy that was like, sort of like bouncing around the mat. Like, yes, just like doing I, that. Like, I don't know what you call that, but like doing these flips and spins and like always like moving. It didn't seem very effective. 
but to me it was like okay. really entertaining like i mean like i i wanted to see it be more effective i guess <laughs> it's a, it's and he just... has he has a great fight in the beginning where he wins like he he beats somebody but then he faces off against that like giant dude yep and then it's like david and goliath kind of story but he he loses he like yeah gets i don't know squeezed to death or well he doesn't die he yeah he passes out because he because it obviously when someone dies it's very very sad it's... yeah there is one death and it's because of chong lee and he does like it's like after he's like really defeated the guy too it's over and he like snaps his neck or like hits him in a way we don't even we're not even sure how he like what he dies of like a broken neck or what but the ref comes over it's the same ref throughout i love the ref by the way too he's just he's perfect he's very into it and he comes over and he like checks it checks on the guy and then he looks up at bolo yang he's just like oh gasp and then the 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 dais like the three organizers of the event like turn away and they like kind of bow and it's like a moment of silence and um chong lee is just like man and and walks away but yeah only one death so yeah that's a great fighter any other memorable fighters for you besides the kind of jumping around dude i can't really think of anything else that's like stands out i mean the only one that I mean, the only one they, you know, they kind of, they don't, there's only like really six of them that really stand out, except for the ones that just die, like really, like they lose in like two seconds. You know, yeah. there's like, obviously the main, the, the main three, right? Um, and then you have like the the big guy, and then you have the, the guy that's black that bounces around. I guess like the one with the pink shorts in the beginning, I don't remember, I don't know how to describe him. Like, yeah. Um, I mean. He's but, like a Muay Thai. Yeah, like I, I can't think of. Oh yeah, I guess the one guy like I I I prefer I preferred him better in the bar than actually in the fight was the guy with like the the do rag that go over his head. Oh yes, he's got like the Arabian kind of headdress type of thing. Yeah, but like, then when he fights, red. he takes yeah. it off, and I actually yeah. I actually enjoyed that character more so in the bar for some reason. I'm like, oh, this guy has some character, and then he loses it completely when he fights. Um, yes, there is like a not a. Not a potential rape scene, but like a potential, like uh, assault scene for yeah, sure, or something maybe. like that. As he grabs the reporter, like you're coming with me, and that's how JCVD meets her. He intervenes. <laughs> and like, he gives her up as a, as a gamble. Like it's like, hey, if I win, if I can take this coin away from you, you can have the girl. Or if I can't do oh, it, yeah. She's, <laughs> she's like, what? what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't fair. It does, it's like it's funny like everything he says he's going to do he ends up doing like it's like yes. he never fails at anything like I, no you no know I mean? no, this is like frank dukes the like this is why so much of it is like did this happen we know like a lot of this had to be fictionalized already before you question the validity of the story like you need yeah. like a love interest you need a a best friend who's how would you describe his best friend Ray Jackson? What's his fighting style? Oh, also, they bond over playing bar the brawler. arcade karate he's, game. He's a bar brawler. That's why he's good at games. He plays a lot. Of, he goes to a lot of bars. He plays video games. My favorite move of his is grabbing someone's head and and, <laughs> and doing this. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, his yeah his fighting is just literally just grabbing. He's like Zangief, I think that's like the best way to describe his fight. Oh. You're doing Zangief dirty though on that. Like Zangief at least had some he could do a like a spinning tile driver. I'm just saying but... in in you know, in retrospect, like he's like a Zang because a lot of these characters have like a Street Fighter type of vibe to him, I feel like. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like you got you got you got Yamada oh, what's a, uh what's the what's the big sumo wrestling? Your E Honda. You E Honda, yep. And then like, you know, you the the guy that's black that kind of bounced around that makes you think of like a the guy with the stretchy arms a little bit. He kind of oh, bounced. Same. Well, let me just explain Street Fighter for you. Yeah, I can't remember their names. <laughs> I just know what their fighting style is. Yeah, and it and I mean that's it though. There's no there's no Chun Li. There's only Chong Li because yeah. there are no women in the tournament. And really, I think sh- the reporter lady is the only woman in the building, and she's dressed like she's going to the prom with her. No, there the is a there's a bunch of ladies. In, there's a bunch of ladies in the crowd. In the crowd, there's, there? there's, oh, a, okay. there's there's like there's like Japanese. Uh, or Asian people, Asian women. He, she was the only like American yeah. one, but I remember seeing. She some does female. stick out like a sore thumb. That's probably yeah. Why her I hair is so big. 
Yes, <laughs> big and on one side, like very prom dressy. Like all she needed was a corsage. I, I love how like she like struggles to find this kumite. And it's like the hardest thing in the world, and she's like trying to talk to all these people, but then she just sort of like just flirts with a guy and gets in. Like I just, yep. <laughs> I like that guy too because he comes over to Frank. And he's like Frank, you're my man, Frank Dukes. He's like, you feeling good? You feeling good? It's like uh, he's like, yes, I feel fine, thank you. All right, my next question for you, Justin. All right, favorite sport. Favorite what? There are a few. There are a few in this movie. Favorite split. Oh, favorite split. JCVD split. Oh, it's yeah. got to be. Okay, so we didn't talk too much about the flashback scenes. <laughs> I love how you did. And once you heard the question, no hesitation. You have your answer. Yeah. Um, because, like, we, we kind of glossed over the flashback scenes, which, again, like, are, like, seriously, like, half the movie, I feel like. You're just, like, Jean-Claude Van Damme just staring at a sword for, like, 30 minutes, like, in the same shot for 30 minutes. You know, every every like four or five minutes you see it again and you learn about his master and why or whatever you want to call him is sensei or whatever. Yeah. Uh and the reason I guess he's going to Kumite to represent him. Yes. But like my favorite split isn't really a split, is literally when he's on the tree and being like pulled <laughs> like <laughs> a lot of this movie is torture. <laughs> it's like it's like him just like being pulled by like I don't know yeah. what he's being pulled by, like a, a like, like, very like tense branches. Like I don't know what they are. Yeah, there's there's two like trees, and Jean Claude Van Damme is is strapped arms and legs apart mm. by ropes, and, like pulleys. I assume. Like, yeah, they don't really focus on the physics of it, but his sensei is like pulling him tighter to make him stretch out. Forget stretching yourself or gymnastics or anything like that, Justin. This is how you become a kickboxer. You have somebody literally pull your legs apart. <laughs> it's like literally like yeah, in order to be a true kickboxer, you have to you have to have your joints almost ripped out of their sockets and put back in. <laughs> the training of this didn't make any sense to me. It's like what like some of the training was fine, but it's like like a lot of it just like I love how it's like it shows him training like with the blindfold on. I'm like, okay. Like yep. and, and then like it makes it it makes a reason there's a reason for it towards the end. But it's like you almost forget about it because it's like it happened so long ago. <laughs> this is well, you see, like that's the thing. There's a whole like <laughs> it's not a tone issue, it's a time issue with this. Like you could make this a life story and then it culminates with the Kumite. But they glossed over so much of it. They they set up so much background garbage that you don't need. The agents, the chasing, all this. You you could have very easily said, like, okay, he was a young thug. He broke into this guy's house. He almost stole the sword, but he couldn't. And, and, the, and the guy who owns the house and his son, his son comes and, like, whips his ass real quick, too. I love that. Uh, but... But basically takes him in and like like he's like I will teach him martial arts, and then the the son of the sense they actually dies, and then Frank feels like it's you know upon him the the responsibility to represent him at the Kumite is is now yeah Frank's. I feel like they were missing like, something there like, there like like there's a sensical story yeah like if you were to add like okay like maybe they built the relationship because they showed that a little bit like Frank and the son became like sort of like a built relationship he like he, he protected him yeah. at school uh if hit the son went to the kumite and died at the kumite mm -hmm. then yeah oh perfectly makes sense that frank goes there and wants to do that right to represent and to kind of you know be as because like the master only only brought him in to teach his son right initially yeah. which I was, I was i was laughing a second ago because i was just thinking of the scene of like the 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 sensei coming to frank's house and talking to his parents like, oh yes, he's like yeah. he's like a college recruiter. It's like this is what I'm going to do for your son. <laughs> we both came to this country, and we both raise things <laughs> like children, and like and and yeah. you, I raise crops, and you raise something else. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Tea. He I don't raise know. money as a fundraiser. <laughs> Who knows? But yes. oh, you know, he has fish, and they're doing crops or something. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I like a hatchery. <laughs> but let me let me. You're absolutely right. And, and here's the thing they miss it right from the get-go you could have had the son like just a throwaway line like i still miss him he died in the kumite but we have no idea how the son died nope. no idea nope no idea he's just like, 
a, like a little flash forward in the flashback to them looking at a picture of like the sun. We assume it's a little bit older and that there's like candles in front of it. Like, Oh, it's like a shrine. He's dead. Mm -hmm. No reason why. Um, I do like you have you have the elements of like a good movie. Yeah. Sort of good like, movie. Like you could have had, had two Kumates going on. Like you could have shown like a like the beginning of them setting up a Kumate, then it's showing Frank going to this Kumate. You don't really know why. You know, you still have the cheesy things that are happening, but then maybe his memory is like start he 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 goes to visit his sick sensei, a little bit of a yep. flashback of like him meeting his sensei or something, and as you he as he travels to the Kumite, he's remembering things of his sensei. He meets the new characters. It makes you think of a training thing. Then it's like, then it's like, oh, you're you're representing what's his name? His last sends his last student that came didn't it didn't go very well for him. And then it's like a flashback yes, yes. To, to that. Like, yeah, they could have made this movie like, I at least have a, a story that like is sort of like respectable. I guess. like a through line, you know, yeah. like an emotional through line that you follow from beginning to end. We could even up the ante and say that Chong Lee killed his son. There you go. You know? Yeah, perfect. Because he did a revenge story. Yeah, because he kills and, and he kills another person. Sensei's, yeah, because he kills another. And the person. sensei's deathbed, he gets to say like, "I will get you know revenge for you know your son. Like I will represent you." Because his motivation for going, just like representing his family, like I get it, it's like an honor thing, sure, but it's it could be more. And I yeah. mean, for a movie, it it needs to be more, especially for a movie that we really like. Nobody knows about the fucking Kumite. Sorry, excuse me. Nobody knows about the Kumite. All those you know, kids that are, like... are listening to our podcast right now, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah, I'll put something in the what is it marker? Is it a marker, marker, marker. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know there, like I feel like this is what we were going to do anyways like how would we make this movie actually work because there's there's good stuff in this but it's filled with just nonsense mm -hmm. and I will I will I will make this pronouncement after watching it again with you it's been it had been a long time since I'd seen it I think that Kickboxer is the better movie this oh. movie is yeah this this movie is not as great Kickboxer has more of an emotional through line. He's got John Claude Van. Dijk. It's basically the same story. Underground fighting tournament. His brother gets paralyzed fighting in the tournament. Jean Claude Van Damme seeks revenge. Finds a guy who can train him in a way that so that he can beat the main bad guy. You beat the main bad guy. You know, like way more of a movie, which makes me wonder because I know this was. JCVD's like breakout role, like his first like actual main billing role. If they basically said like, okay, let's do blood sport, but let's do it right. Let's try to make it better. Okay. So that would, maybe so not for the podcast, but I feel like we should watch Kickboxer. I think you would appreciate that okay. more. It's got better fights. So that too. happened. That came after blood sport. Then Kickboxer. It has to have. It has to have. I, I can't imagine that it came out after uh, before blood sport. But it also launched like a thousand sequels as well. Um, 1989, a year later, a year wow. later. So when they started filming it right after they filmed this one, it's like <laughs> they probably never left. They probably stayed in Hong it, Kong. Did that take place going. in Hong Kong? Kickboxer? No, that one I think takes place in Thailand, uh, Bangkok. Yeah, Thailand. Okay. Yeah, because this is it, it's more about um. It starts like hit, like JCVD is not like the fighter at all. Like it's his brother who is like the the champion, like some martial arts champion, who wants to fight in this tournament to like prove himself. Um, and he thinks he can beat this dude, and the dude basically cripples him, like paralyzes him from the waist down. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot of like the jealousy too, like with the brother, like his brother who can't fight anymore, seeing seeing his brother like kind of do what he wanted to do you know it, it actually has some substance to it this movie is like is basically a kid's movie the more i think about it. <laughs> like a really weird warped canon film kids movie <laughs> it's mortal combat um, before there was mortal combat sure no you're right i mean this has been they've, they've admitted that these movies are kind of effect, um inspired mortal combat too uh um, sure but, uh, you're right. I think you said like Street Fighter came out a little bit before this too, and I'm sure that they were trying to cash in a little bit on that the popularity. Um, but uh, 
I have to say like that. that one thing we we I want to bring up is like I I was thinking about it like a Roy Jackson, like yes. his character like you you have to have a friend in your life like Roy Jackson like seriously yeah. how they became friends like he was kind of an he's like he looked like he was gonna be kind of an asshole at first you're like he's being yep. creepy to the lady on the bus, and like then it's like hey you want to play some video games I'm better than you and it's like oh I lost you're better than me you want to be friends, yep it, it's basically <laughs> like. Like two guys, and, and and again, like it's done so clunkily and and so you know weirdly. But you've got the the bones of like a good friendship. Two guys in a foreign country, you know, experiencing it for the first time, and they get, they form a camaraderie. Yeah, but I like, don't even like the video game scene. I really don't. I, love I feel the video like game scene. That's my favorite thing in the movie. I think <laughs> much better than Ray Jackson creeping on the girl on the bus. Sure. Yeah, like really gross, and like it takes, like JCVD teaches him to be humble. Yep. I don't know, but I love him in the crowd. Whenever JCVD's fighting, like he's like, he's like the only one cheering for anybody. Like, like he's like the only fighter that's like, yeah, go. Like, what happens if they had to fight each other? That's what I want to know. I, I'm curious you about know? that. That's that that scene. That would have been, been that would have been a good little uh, moment to see how that would have ended. But. Well, what did you think of that? Like, I this is really it. This is all like I have questions for you. You've answered them all. <laughs> but what did you think about Ray Jackson fighting Chong Lee? That fight. I mean, it was good. I don't have any like huge emotions or feelings about it. I mean, it was fine. It um, it was totally not fine. He managed to like make Chong Lee bleed, and then what did he do? He just started celebrating. Oh well, no, like, like I, I yeah, okay, you're right. Got him. I got him. It was I funny. Did it. Got him. I guess like you would, you kind of like you already had like uh, set me up for that to happen because I think you made a comment early on uh, in the movie. It's like yeah, like you know he's gonna have that issue later where he's like he's. Oh cussing. yeah, you were like yeah, you 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 said like he's showboats like before the fight's <laughs> even over, and I'm like yeah, that's kind of an issue. <laughs> so I kind of was like ready for that, but like, but yeah, like uh, obviously. But it had to happen. I kind of it's predictable too. He's gonna he's not gonna beat he's not gonna beat the main bad guy, so he has to get beat up to give I guess John Claude Van Damme some motivation because we didn't have any to begin with. You know, it's like, honor in Ray Jackson. <laughs> but uh, I do have to say I do really like the last the last I mean best fight favorite fight if you want to call it that favorite moment really is really the final fight. I think that was actually really a good payoff for all the stuff we got through. Um, yes. I mean, yes. I like how they changed like the flooring for the final fight. They make it more of that race thing. Uh using the referee to really like good. interact with him. Like he did the guy just throws the referee at John Clad Van Dam. Like, yeah. I thought that was <laughs> awesome. And then John Claw, he's like he's like the polite really protector. Like he's he saves him, he moves him away because he can't see, right? Puts him behind him, yeah. Um <laughs> Because Bolo Yank th throws salt in his eyes, right? Or which something. he puts in his his pants. I but before like, what is this pill that he Ugh. puts in his pants? <laughs> Whatever he takes out of his sweaty pants to throw in your eyes, I'm sure it hurts. Um, but yeah, like obviously has like the the, the big mo known gif of a kid doing the eyes, like ah, like like. <laughs> but uh, like yeah, no, I thought that was a it was a really well correct. Uh, I can never say these words, Corey. Choreographer, choreographed, choreographed. Yeah, is that how you say it? Yep. Um, yes. <laughs> like yeah, like that. It was, it was for for the time. I always, I always give like a a benefit of the doubt for when the movie was made, when it comes to choreography. So like, I thought it was good for the the the, the vibe and the, the style, and you know, I don't know, I no, it, was good, it was a good ending. You know, way better ending than like the up the the, the bring up to like, hey, we're gonna stop you from going in this fight. Oh, I guess we failed. Let's get some popcorn. Yes. I like how the, the, the agents who've been chasing them all through Hong Kong, finally in the end, they're like, ah, screw it. Like, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the funniest hallway, with the funniest hallway fight scene, I have to say, like, it's just like, Oh yeah. The trap they set for him. <laughs> These guys with guns come out, like with their guns raised up in the air, like not even pointing them. At <laughs> <laughs> they kind like, of could have so easily just two people pointed a gun at him and been like, Stop moving. And they, they, but they, but the the agents don't want to get. They just use tasers, and he's like not even a phase by the taser. It's like whatever, you know, whatever. I'm just gonna well, go fight. He used like a trash can to bounce them back and it like hit them instead. 
It's mm-hmm. a cartoon. It turns into a cartoon when it's not the Kumite. <laughs> <laughs> just becomes like charlie chaplin yeah because like the, the the reporter lady is like so she, her like motivation she's like flip-flops consistently it's like i need to find the kumite i want to write this story i need to mm-hmm. use you you need to fight in the kumite so i can go in here and it's like when she gets in there like oh this is so violent like what do you think it was it was a oh yeah <laughs> like, oh, he, he, and it's like, like and she's like oh don't fight support. and then yay fight him and beat him and no don't fight yay fight him and beat him like what paper does she work for <laughs> like like which i i yeah who it's sent, just like yeah like who's sent around this, who's who sent around the story of the secret you know, kumite yeah were they i feel like this was somebody like you know like the boss's niece or something at the paper they're like just send her to hong kong just tell her she's got to find it. Like, no help, no contacts, no, like, <laughs> everything that a journalist would need before they even set foot in Hong Kong. She's just walking around, like, to people in the open in restaurants, like, do you know what Kumite is? <laughs> she, doesn't even, like, she doesn't even have, like, a partner or anything or a bodyguard for this, like, no. this this really she needs dangerous a place. You know? <laughs> Freaking JCVD and Roy, Ray Jackson don't need a handler. She needs a handler. She sure. needs somebody to help. She sure. She becomes, like, like she's almost the victim of assault. She's like basically a prize for these guys. Ugh. The other yeah, thing they, we were we were laughing about too. We didn't really bring this up before we end this, but like bring up the lady. It's like you think this is a movie for guys, right? But it's like it really. Oh no, it's not. Like you you have so many shots that are like not really meant for a heterosexual. Like you know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> my theory now after watching it with you. <laughs> This is Top Gun with kicking. I know. You know? It's like, there's so many up close shots of his pecs and chest and like pecs, buttocks. Chest, you, buttocks, lots you of You don't even shots. you don't even get a boob shot. Like she's like after they finally have sex and whatever. She's fully clothed yeah. in bed. I know. It's like who who is this movie for? I think it's for you know, like if I'm who knows who this movie is for. This movie is really like but who does it appeal to? I would say um anybody who enjoys watching beefcake you sure. know like there's like, a lot of beefcake in this movie and to be fair i don't think you have to have boobs to make this movie meant for guys just to say that but like it no, just seems but, like the the priority was completely not where you would think a, a males type movie which would have been this kind of movie back in the 80s exactly would be of its time you would expect a scantily clad woman eye candy that kind of thing and no instead it's it's like the opposite it's which you know maybe that's telling of the of the movie of Frank Dukes himself. Like who knows? But yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's, all over the place. Maybe that's John Claude. There's... Maybe John Claude was like that. Maybe he's like I don't want to have. I don't. I don't know if his movies are generally like. You can show me, but don't don't yeah, make her. Don't, don't disrespect the women. Don't do that. <laughs> and then he said, "Thank you." <laughs> Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm so glad that you you at least enjoyed this polite. I, good time. I don't. I don't know if I could have liked it. I mean, I might have liked it by myself, but I think it was better, obviously, watching mm-hmm. it together for sure. All right, Justin. Well, I mean, I appreciate that you that you did give it the time of day. You watched it with me. We, you know, were able to at least share this experience of blood sport together. I'm so glad I could finally expose you to it and all the pecs and butts. <laughs> <laughs> that you got to, to your heart's desire but um i think uh I, I i i think maybe down the line we'll take a break from this genre for a little while maybe we'll come back to 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 it with kickboxer someday but uh are there any last thoughts you have about the movie anything you'd like to say i think we, I think we covered every <laughs> everything you can i think we i don't know why if there's another oh. podcast about this film I feel like we talked about it way more than that podcast because I don't know how All else right. you could talk about it. Like, what else do you say? There's nothing. There's nothing else to talk well, about. What, well, here's my here's my last final thing for you. Would you recommend? Is this a movie like? Would you recommend this to somebody? Is this like you got to see it to believe it, or so bad it's good, or what do you think? How, I, where would you? I feel like there's just too many other good like uh, action karate movies out there that I feel like I wouldn't recommend you to watch it. Like I, I only watch I, I I I honestly that's where I that's where I stand. Like I'm sorry, Paul. Yeah, I, yeah. I I feel like this. I mean, if you really want to watch John Claude Van Damme and just see where he began, sure. But like, I don't think you have to rush out to watch this movie. movie. Yeah, there's better. Like you're even saying Kickboxer is better. So like, yeah. 
Um, um, I don't. I don't I, think I can I, recommend it. Sadly, I understand. I understand. <laughs> um, I, I think mine would be more like see it just to believe it. Um, really, you can you can fast forward through a lot of this. Watch the chase scenes between Jean Claude yeah, and the you, agents. Watch YouTube clips. And just watch sure. the fights. Yeah. And really, anytime Ray Jackson's on screen, stop and watch. But you can just gloss over so much of this movie. Sure. Yeah. Watch the clips online. Don't don't invest a tight ninety minutes. It doesn't feel like a tight ninety <laughs> no, it minutes. It feels like it's forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Justin. I appreciate you putting in the effort for it. <laughs> um and until next time, until we come back to review another classic, classic cult favorite, uh, this has been Playing Favorites. I'm Paul. Justin. Have a good one. Okay. Ready to go. I kind of kind of want to start off like with uh, like John Claude where he's doing the whole like leg spread and not, not responding to you talking to me <laughs> like yeah
You I'll keep my hand up. Okay, we are we are recording. All right. You don't have to do that. You can just start your statement. It's fine. <laughs> Put your hand down. <laughs>